Welcome back, guys. As, is, as you remember, I left you guys off with the heads being taken off. Now we are going to go ahead and move into the cam portion of this build. Again, these things are really easy to do when the freaking motor is out of the car. However, when the motor is in the car, there's a bunch of stuff in the way that you get got to, that you got to get out of the way. So, if you're doing like the heads like I was, you might have the majority of the stuff already out of the way, but if you're just doing a cam swap on your motor, then you're probably going to have to take off this is for, of course, a C6 Z06. I think it's probably the same for a C6 base and Grand Sport. But anyways, you're going to have to remove your power steering. You're going to have to remove the whole intake system, um, the whole radiator system. Um, highly recommend re removing the condenser if you have a way of evacuating the system because this is a huge pain to take out without um, the condenser. Um, what else? You're gonna remove all the belts, all the bracketry, and yeah, and like probably the radiator shrouds and all that stuff. But now we're gonna move on to the easier stuff, which is the water pump. That's just six bolts one, two, three, four, five, six. And it comes off. As you can see, it's right here. Fairly easy to take off. Now for the hard part, and probably kind of. Um, not controversial, but like people do it other ways. What you're gonna have to do is take off the whole freaking power steering system. Not power steering, power steering, not system, but the power steering rack. And so this is pretty much why. Without the rack out of the way, you cannot take off this crank pulley or the get to the bolt. So we're gonna have to go ahead and disconnect all these lines. We're gonna make a mess too, so that's gonna be annoying. And then you're gonna have to go ahead and take it off from you know this the knuckle bump that nut off and then hit this thing hard so it can pop off and then you can move it to the side or completely take it out I'm probably gonna go ahead and take it completely out just to give me more some more space and room and then once that thing comes off we can go ahead and pull this take this bolt off and then we're gonna have to use a special tool to get the crank pulley off and once that's off we can go ahead and get to the timing cover and then the cam behind it. So let me start at that and we'll go from there. Of course, that took way longer than expected. As you can see, the steering rack's out. I don't know if some people actually leave it in the car and just move it to the side, but I figured, you know, since this is my first time, I need all the room I can get. Now we got the crank pulley widely accessible. I'm gonna take the bolt out, then put the, uh, the puller on it, pull the crank pulley off, then we can get, take this timing chain cover off. Dude, I took all the lines off. I highly doubt I needed to do that, but I just felt like it was easier to do that. Hopefully I remember where everything goes because I'm just going crazy at this point because I want to get this damn car done. But next thing, let's go ahead and uh, fire up the air compressor. This should be torqued to like 250 foot pounds, so you're gonna need a air, either an air gun or an impact gun that can hopefully take that off or somehow locked the motor to get you know some force on that so let me go charge up the compressor and see if this little stubby can do it me oh my i am very surprised that little gun earthquake xt was actually able to get off that crank pulley bolt very very surprised and also that little air compressor was able to give enough enough juice to get that thing out so bolts out good thing to remember before you take it out is to put the motor in TDC there we go next you want to mark the crank as much as you can so I put a two right here so that can goes on top of that two and then I scratched it right there so it lines up right there because this is balanced um, and placed on a certain way so if you were to put it on differently it might go out of balance so I'm trying to replicate exactly how those how it came off so Next, we can go ahead and take off the crank pulley with one of these jaws that I bought from Harbor Freight. One of these should get it off, and then we'll move on from the rest. And there she goes. By the way, these Harbor Freight pullers um, got the job done, but the threads on this are toast. 
definitely not meant to put that much force on those, so whoopsies. Anyways, harmonic balancer is off. We can go ahead and start taking off all these bolts now. And that cover should just come off with no problem. Oh, this little pulley's in the way. Did not see that guy. Um, hopefully I can get through that. No, I'm gonna have to remove it. Ugh, freaking annoying. All right, uh, I'm gonna remove that pulley and then get all these bolts off. This should just be follow the cover and then there's two on the bottom, I believe. So let's get that done. Now that the timing cover is off, we can go ahead and see the timing chain and the, of course the oil pump or the, yeah, oil pump. Like I said, look at that chain slot. A good idea to change your chain while you're in here and the tensioner for it because that's a pretty substantial amount of play on this chain so might as well change it and upgrade it while you're doing that next we're gonna go ahead and remove the oil pump <clears throat> some people say they can do the cam swap without doing this however like I said I'm changing the chain so this requires the oil pump to come off be very careful because the gasket for the oil pump is part of the oil pan gasket so if you mess it up you have to change the whole oil pan gasket and that requires a lot more work so I'm gonna take this off as gently as I can and hopefully the gasket remains intact so we can use it again and have oil pressure because I hear that stuff is good for your motor but who knows alrighty now that we have the oil pump off, we can see that we are truly in TDC. Those two pink dots with right here, right there. And also cylinder number one's on top. Um, so I try to take off the oil pump by just like wiggling it. However, again, like I said, the O-rings for the oil pump are part of the oil pump gasket. So if you damage these, that means removing the cradle and lifting the motor. So I really didn't want to do that. So I ended up loosening all the oil pan bolts around the motor. And then it gave me a little bit of clearance to drop the pan down a little bit. And once I did that, I was able just to walk off the oil pump. And there she is, nice and pretty. And of course, all our O-rings, very crucial are intact and looking good so we can go ahead and reuse that gasket so now we can take off um, these three bolts this timing tensioner and then replace it with um, the brand new timing chain and then of course take out the stock lame cam in here so let's go ahead and take these bolts off and get that cam out as you can see it's a new freaking day where did I leave you guys off? I think I had all this goodies out and ready to be messed with. I stopped last night because of course I ran out of tools or should I say I didn't have the right tools to continue and I needed these damn torque bits. Man, these Chevys are beating me up with these specialty tools. So of course, Harbor Freight for the win. Uh, went to go pick this up. Got the tool that I need now. So I can go ahead and take that cam cover off and once that um, plate comes off we can go ahead and uh, pull the cam out without trying to damage any of the bearings in there. Uh, what people do is usually thread a couple of bolts here so you can hold on to it while you're pulling the cam out so let me go ahead and get that cover off and we'll get this cam out. And there you have it one cam out. I highly recommend taking this freaking AC condenser out because even it even with it like out of the way this thing was still a pain to get around but that is out let's go ahead and get the replacement which is in the car One second. here she is baby rpm b3 let's get it now that I got the cam all cleaned up and ready for um, assembly, we're going to go ahead and put a good amount of assembly lube. This stuff is amazing from Lucas. Be generous. Don't be shy with this stuff. It will come off during the end. 
like when the whole engine is cycled with real oil. So I'm gonna hope, make sure this is nice and coated and then we're gonna stick it in the motor. Hopefully everything goes well. And there she is, boys. RPM B3 installed. All the surfaces are clean. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the timing wheel, I guess that's what it's called, and then slap on the chain and the tensioner. And then we'll be done with this front part of it. Then we can go ahead and probably wrap that up, save it for later in case somehow I ever do need that. Then I'm gonna clean up the timing chain cover and then close everything up from here. And now that I got the timing wheel or sprocket, whatever you wanna call it, cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with this timing chain, lather it and this Lucas Green stuff, and then wrap it around and then go ahead and install it on the car. And I also got my brand new timing chain tensioner. Here she is, slap that on there. I'm not sure which one goes on first, but we'll figure it out. And now we got our new cam bolts. I got the ARP lube on the back of the head and on the threads, all three. And I got, as you can see, the timing, new timing chain on with timing wheel, TDC, cool, everything lines up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put the bolts on and then put the timing chain tensioner. I think all that stuff goes up to 25 foot pounds and then we should be done with this. So let me go ahead and do that. Oh yeah guys, don't forget the freaking cam cover. I totally put everything on, torqued it down and then as I went to finish everything else, I pulled the whole freaking cam. I was like, oh, forgot about that. So gotta redo everything again. So put those, put that plate on first and then tie in those things up to like 22 and then gotta redo whatever I just did. All right, guys. Now finishing up, we got the oil pan or oil pump seated. Um, kind of recall, recall that the owner's manual doesn't want you to tighten these bolts on just yet, but rather tighten the the pan first, and then go ahead and torque these. But what I'm gonna do is what I've been, what I've been seeing is people snug the pan up to the oil pump, tighten, torque these after the pan is snug to the oil pump and then finishing torquing the rest of the oil pan bolts. Because remember, the oil pump actually has um, the gaskets on the oil pan gasket. So you wanna make sure that that is sealed correctly to the oil pan, because if not, you're gonna get no oil pressure. So this is a very crucial step, very um, important not to also mess up the gaskets while you're reinserting the oil pump so take your time be careful it took me a little while didn't want to push too hard because didn't want to damage this gasket because if you do that's a whole another hours and hours of work to get to replace that so i'm gonna go ahead and t snug up all these oil pan bolts then torque oil pump bolts and then finish torquing the rest of the pan down so let's go ahead and get that done and now oil pump is finally torqued down all the oil pan bolts are torqued down um, all the lines that I disconnected or loosened to, you know, get to the oil pan bolts are torqued down. I think we are ready to move on to the front timing cover now. And that's over here, so we gotta, um, uh, where is it actually? Oh, here it is. So clean it up, get that seal out, and then replace it with the other seal and use the timing tool that I got. I mean, the timing, whatever, front main seal tool that I got and then we should be ready to install. So let's clean this up and get all the stuff off and we'll move from there. All right, so I got the front timing cover cleaned, all looking pretty. As you can see, these LS um, timing covers are not, they're free floating, so there's no like dowel pin or like a secure method for it to sit perfectly. So that's why a lot of the times when you put this on, you just eyeball it you will have a leak somewhere because it's not fully seated. So this is where this Sac City Corvette um, alignment tool actually comes into play and very handy. So pretty much lube up the old ring, slide it in, and you should be able to, if I can get it to line up perfectly, there you go. Push it in all the way or as much as it will let you. Now you have this perfectly aligned and you can go ahead and um, torque all these bolts down. Um, but I would go from the bottom first. But yeah, so let me go ahead and do that and we'll move on to the front seal. 
Now that the timing cover is all set in place and all the bolts are torqued down, we can go ahead and still use a tool, but this time move on to our new front main seal or front case seal. I'm gonna go ahead and lube this up a little bit first, and then I'll show you what we do with the timing tool alignment thingy. Okay, I just lubed up the inner circle of that. You're gonna go ahead and start it right there. And then with the same tool, it seats over it perfectly. And you go ahead and just tap it in with like a rubber mallet that I have right here. And then all should be set once it's all said and done. Let me use two hands just to make sure, but it's all already looking like it's already there, but I'll be right back. And with a couple of love taps, just like that, it is all set and done. So we can go ahead and now um, throw on the harmonic balancer. This is gonna be a pain because this actually gets bolt torqued down to 235 foot-pounds. And my current torque wrench only goes up to 100, so I might have to go to um, AutoZone and rent one out. But yeah, I think in the meantime we're done. We've, we've done all that we can do up front. I think I can go ahead and slap on the heads while I'm here. So yeah, let me go set this harmonic balancer on and then we'll move on to the heads. Okay, I went to go put in the rack back, but then I realized if I put the rack back in, I cannot do, or I cannot tighten the ARP um, uh, harmonic balancer bolt. So we're gonna move on. So the surface is officially clean and ready to get the head put on. I just cleaned it again with some brake cleaner. But first, we gotta take out these rags finally and install our freaking lifters. I haven't seen down here in ages. So, hopefully it's all good. I can see the new freaking cam in there. So that's promising. All right, so let me go ahead and get the lifters and we'll go ahead and throw them in here. Here we have our brand new OEM LS7 lifters and lifter trays. It's a bit of controversy whether to, you know, oil them up or install them dry. Um, I've read both sides to their argument. I'm gonna go ahead and install them dr semi-dry, meaning I'm gonna put this uh, assembly lube on the rollers, on the sides of the lifters, and then on the top of these lifters. So they'll have some uh, lubrication on them. But the story is like, you kinda want them to build pressure, build up pressure on their own. And when you soak them with oil, that kinda defeats that purpose. So I get it. Whatever, we're gonna lather them up and then go ahead and install them in the motor. And there you have it. As you can see, I have a little bit of oil on top of each lifter and they are in place now. Now we can go ahead and tighten these lifter tray bolts. Which I think to like, I don't know, it's like 15 or 12, one of them. And then the head can go on, but I'll, I'll take one more pass on it with um, some brake cleaner and insert the dowel pins, of course, and then slap on the head gasket and then freaking torque the head down. Oh God, this is so scary. All right, we now have the LS7 head gaskets on. From my understanding, they are both the same. They're like, not really directional, as in like this could get placed on the other side. However, you do wanna make sure the front is to the front. And I, it looks like, this font is clearer than the back side of it. So it looks like this should be the top or facing top, I would assume. And make sure it's located well in the dial pins and everything's seated correctly. You're not blocking any water passages or anything like that. And you should be golden. So let's go ahead and throw the heads on now. And voila, we have driver side on. Wow, that looks beautiful. I just threw it on gently. Didn't fight me really. Um, next thing, pretty much, let's go ahead and um, open up the ARP head bolts and start throwing them in here one at a time. Cleaned out the threads, make sure there's no water, or any dirt and debris in there because that will mess up the torque um, settings when you go to torque them. 
And what else did I do? Clean the pistons one more time, clean the surfaces. I'll clean the surface of the head a couple of times and blew everything off, make sure nothing was on it because you want a nice clean surface on both sides. <sighs> but yeah, that's about it. Let's go ahead and throw some head bolts in here and start torquing these bad boys down. And I got the ARP box open and I got all, or the ones that I'm about to use right now, all cleaned and um, dried off from any of the, the grease and debris that it comes. Make sure you guys clean these off because they do have grease on them. This is all from the threads that I just took off. And yeah, clean them and dry them because you want to get pretty accurate and precise torque readings with these so the only way you're going to get that is if you clean them very well and then you lube them up with their ARP assembly lube or not assembly lube whatever molly lube anyways I went with head bolts instead of head studs because eh, I don't know it's just the ones I ordered they really don't make a difference they both give you the same um, reading head studs are just you're able to use those more than head bolts um, but still whatever so they're still going to do get the job done. As you can see, these washers actually come with two different sides. You want to put this side on the head like that because this is going to dig into the head and stop it from spinning. And this is going to be facing the bottom of the bolt, so like that. And then what else you want to do? You want to put the ARP lube on the threads and on the back side of this or the head of the bolt. And then we're going to go ahead and follow this sequence. The ARP gives us. Um, first, we're gonna do one through ten, which is all these right here on the bottom, the main ones. We're gonna go to 25, and then to 50, and then to 75. After that, we'll go ahead and do 11 through 15 on the top, and that's just one sequence of 25 foot pounds. So let me get these all lubed up and then place on the head, and then we'll go ahead and torque them down. And there you have it, ladies and gents. ARP um, head bolts are torqued down. We went, like I said, 25, 50, 75, and follow that order, of course. These are the main ones that I pretty much hold the head to the block, and now we're just going to do these upper ones real quick. Same um, process. Got to clean these guys out real good and um, lube them up with ARP. It's, um, assembly lubricant. It is assembly lubricant. Oh, cool. Um, and then after that, head one will be done. Then we can move on to head two. All right, see you guys in a bit. Back on another day. Once you go rent this torque wrench, AutoZone, we got a 27 mil ARP bolt that we got to crank down to 235 foot pounds. Of course, I got to lube this bay and boy up first with ARP assembly lube, Molly lube. I have a pry bar in the bell housing. Hopefully, that will lock the flywheel in place. And, up, and be strong enough to hold everything in place to, so I can torque this down. And after that, we can go ahead and uh, um, move on to the next head. But I really want to get this done because I want to return that and get my money back. The passenger side head is now ready to um, get um, that head bolted on. I just chased out the threads. A good trick I learned is you take a stock bolt and you actually cut a slit through it, as you can see right there. And you chase the threads, we you know it's in WD-40, just chase them all, make sure they're all nice and clean, and then air dry them out so there's no water or liquid in there and or dirt. And this works really well. Anyways, everything's dried out. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this surface and then go ahead and install the lifters. So let's go do that. And just like the other side, we got the lifters in, we got the lift tray in, bolt bolted down, surfaces cleaned, head gasket on. I went to go ahead and took the liberty to clean this head one more time. Surface look, look lovely. Last time we're going to see these lovely valves. But uh, we'll get to see other good stuff like the porting into this. Hopefully we do well. Alright, let's go put this head back on. There you go. Now we turn it on. No, just kidding. Now we can go ahead and put on the ARP head bolt. The reason why you don't want to install the head with the bolt on, some people use the bolts like as a guide, you know, to like drop the head on. 
but sometimes you can actually nick the threads of those bolts and guess where that metal's going right into your motor so you want to install these without the arp head bolts on but now we can go ahead and lube up clean up all those bolts lube, lube them up install them and then go from there all right ladies and gents we are now going to start torquing these head bolts down i have them snug um we're going to go in the sequence the arp mentioned first things first 25 foot pounds there you go and we're going to start from number one which would be this guy and some of you guys may be saying, I'm just using an extension with the socket. Well, there's no way else to get to these bolts without an extension, so sue me. Anyways, let's go ahead and uh, follow this sequence and get all these done. boom 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 there you have it boys both heads are on torqued and all that goody good i threw on the water pump as well um that is torqued as well and the gaskets are on what else do i need to do i think i'm gonna go ahead and throw on the intake manifold on and then really after that it's just undoing everything or redoing everything i undid and quite frankly like, I went on a bunch of vacations and, like, did a bunch of stuff, which I shouldn't have. I should have finished this car because I do not remember where half the stuff, half the shit goes. So, I'm going to have to do a lot of research and just, you know, like, look at photos of stock Z06s and just remember where everything goes. Uh, the wiring harness doesn't look too bad. I remember, like, the plugs are, like, pretty unique to each other, so there's not, like, a lot of uh, duplicate plugs. So, it's just a matter of, you know, like, finding what fits where. Um, other than that, all well, the racks back in as well. That was fun. Um, yeah. So pretty much, let's get the intake manifold on, and then we'll just do a montage of me looking like a fool, trying to remember where everything is. All right, see you in a little bit. Like I said, chugging along, chugging along. We got new gaskets for the valve covers. We got new gaskets for the intake manifold. And we got new, uh... Gaskets for the valve cover bolts. Like I said, I'm doing everything now while I can, while everything's off. Changing everything I, I should be changing and looking over, you know, all that stuff. So I think I'm going to throw on the intake manifold and then pretty much call it a day for now. Um, I got to go get the rest of my parts from my house and bring them over here because I am all out of parts to install at this current location. But super excited that we finally got those heads done. We got let the cam in. Can't wait to turn this thing on. It's gonna be rowdy. Hello guys again. As you can see, not sure exactly where I left this last video off. Also I left my camera, so we're switching cameras for just a quick second. But bear with me. We're making progress today. We got all our rocker arms here. Uh, finally measured push rod length. Um, thankfully, or surprisingly, um, stock push rod length was the way to go with these. I remember when I was talking to WCCH that they were saying um, the, you know, they milled and specced out these heads per the cam that I, I told them I was gonna run. So when you know everything was said and done, they say usually stock push rods work because they take out the amount of lift the cam adds. So milled off, you know, head surface, but then cam adds more lift. So all said and done. Um, stock push rods were the way to go as you can see no um, lash on any of these things and they're all tarked down to 22 foot pounds um, cleaning the rest now so got to get the other side going so I can do that and after we uh, put all the rocker arms in we're gonna go ahead and seal or turn over the motor make sure we have you know no piston to valve contact and if that's good, we'll seal her up with the valve covers and then move on to wiring. Oh, also, intake manifolds bolted back on. These freaking gaskets that I got, so hard to get right. Every company that I bought them from aftermarket was sending me like LS3 or LS1 gaskets, which are taller. Doesn't work for the LS7. Um, 
Or you can go OEM, which is like a hundred dollars for just eight gaskets. It's freaking freaking retarded. So I said no. So it took me a while to get those, but finally got them in. All good, said and done. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and start bolting up all the bracketry, and then just you know start tackling one thing at a time. But finally, all the parts are here, so it's just a matter of bolting everything back up. And like I said, that box that's back here y'all know what that is but i'll get to that later so let's go ahead and uh, finish torquing these up these go torque down to 22 foot pounds no order needed um but yeah let me go finish that side up and we'll pick it up from there Alrighty, chaps i finished everything both you know rocker arms set up are all torqued down push rods are in everything's oiled up <laughs> I had to freaking take off the rack again to turn the crank over to make sure there was no, you know, piston to um, valve interference. So that was annoying. So leave your rack off until you're for sure not needing to turn over the motor. If you have an ARP uh, crank pulley bolt, if you had the standard one, you could fit a regular 24 inch or 24 millimeter uh, wrench on it and turn it over. But this you need a socket, so I had to take the rack off. And I am happy to announce that there is no piston to valve um, interference or touching or anything like that. So we can move on to what should we do? I'm gonna go ahead and get like a cup of oil, just lather it on top right there on both sides and then seal those valve cover up. I have the rack attached to the knuckle again. So that's, you know, finally in its place. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the alternator and all the power steering stuff. 